Hi, babes. Welcome back to the Chase Life with Kelly show. Um, I am your host, Kelly Chase. We are bringing back on for part three, Kristen Windsor. You guys, she has been on every other week, I guess the last couple of times. Um, so yeah, we're we're diving in a little bit deeper. Obviously, you heard her story on part one, the first episode, uh, second one, we kind of did more of like a coaching type of session. Um, and then for this episode, we are going to really uh, speak more on um, what somatics is and all of that. And yes, I know we have had other um, experts come on and speak on somatic, but I think everyone's journey is different and how they have, whether it's taught themselves or have, you know, invested in someone to teach them, whatever the case may be, everyone has a different story in that regard. And I think that, you know, in that regard, we can all learn the different ways and styles and learn from the different experiences. And maybe you'll resonate more with Kristen's over one of the other women that I have had on, um, or vice versa. So, um, but yeah, we're actually, we're going to kind of theme this episode, Know Thyself. Uh, Kristen thought of that and I was like, yeah, that's a good one. (laughs) So we're going to know thyself, but we're going to get to know me. Um, I know, I feel like you guys like it when I share my own vulnerabilities. So we're going to dive in a little bit for me. Um, and we'll try and keep this episode about 60 minutes, 60, 75 minutes. Um, cause I know that we can get long winded because we're just so enthralled with this information. Mm-hmm. We, we enjoy it. Um, but I do have a beautiful outside day waiting for me. So <laughs> I'm going to try and keep it to that. Oh, it's been a long day already, but anyways, I am tapped out, but for the next 75 minutes, we were tapped in and tuned in to Miss Kristen. So thank you so much again for being here. I really appreciate it. And, you know, you, you just w- volunteering to share your uh, space and your light with us. So thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. It's just a beautiful opportunity to get to connect and to share that intimate journey because we are all impacted by this process of awakening to who we are and going through some type of inner healing and expansion and working with these somatic emotions and these feelings that show up in everyday life and are actually a tool to give life meaning. And we get to really like cultivate our inner power and our inner love. And from that place, expand through these topics of self-healing, soul awakening, and somatic emotions. So I'm really grateful to be here. Yeah. I'm so, thank you. (laughs) Awesome. So my first question for you is what are your deepest desires? And I'm all in to get as juicy as you want to go. And I know that can be, you know, different topics, different areas of life, but what do you want? Yeah. Great question. I ask myself that all the time. Um, (laughs) Yeah. I mean, as far like deep, just transparency, honesty, you know, As far as what I am looking for, let's say, um, I mean, I would like more financial freedom, time freedom, location freedom, all of those beautiful freedom (laughs) things that I think everyone loves. Um, I really do. Like I am looking, I told my parents years ago that I wanted to be a millionaire, right? And I don't even know, like that was years ago. And I'm like, sometimes... It's funny because I think my mom has said, do you even know what a million dollars like could feel like? Because it actually runs out pretty quickly. Like, <laughs> but well, so that you know, mindset. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. And I was like, I was like, well, OK, fine. I'm a multimillionaire. Um, why do I want that? Why do I want to be wealthy? You know, I think it comes down to like, why do I want to be wealthy? Why do I want to you know, I, I do want to I want I do want to have a life partner. I want to be married. I want to have children. Um I want to live in a nice, spacious house. And I'm going to say something about that real quick. So I live in a condo and it is spacious for me, right? Like I can't even clean it sometimes, you know, I'm like, oh my God, I need to hire like a maid. (laughs) I need to hire a cleaning service to come in here just because I'm so busy. Um, I can clean my own space, but I went to, um, I have gone to like very expansive homes recently. And although, yes, it felt big, I wasn't, I, it never crossed my mind. Like this is too big. This is ridiculous. That thought didn't cross my mind. Right. It just feels like home. It just feels like where you're meant to be. It just feels like the space that you've always been deserving of. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was like, huh, this feels cool, you know, but 
you know, immediately our mind goes to, oh my God, but this is a lot to clean or something. Well, if you have that type of money, you you ain't cleaning your own home. <laughs> Probably is. So it's like, okay. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, it did. It didn't feel uncomfortable to me. Whereas maybe 15 years ago or even eight years ago or five years ago, I may have been like, yeah, but it's, it's too big. Right. You know, kind of but it's because you grow into the size of your dreams. You expand your worthiness, your confidence, your identity, your deservingness, the, the expansion of your own consciousness is then like, well, yeah, this is normal because the size of my dream fits the size of who I am because I've expanded the essence yeah. of who I am. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it, and you know, I just like space. I love yeah. space. And that's what this house was. It was space. And, um, and yeah, I'm sure that there are homes out there that are like have wings, you know, different wings and quarters and things like that. And like, um, yeah, I think that would be too big for me, but this house, I was like, okay, this feels good. Like it's, it's spacious. Like I just like all the space, like the rooms were so spacious. So two questions for you. Yeah. One where is there a feeling of spaciousness in your life right now that you can tap into and expand? One for me, for example, was not in living scenarios because I lived in a tiny, tiny shed, like literally a tiny shed for five years. <laughs> and I got to go find spaciousness by going down to a big open field and doing two hour dance meditations. And I felt so spacious that that feeling carried with me no matter what room I was in. And that was like a big, like, you know, I can be in this cramped space for, you know, tick, 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 many hours doing my work, doing my this, doing my that, two hours in that open field. And that spaciousness was so expansive. It was a feeling I could carry with me for those next, you know, 22 hours till my next, you know, meditation in that. So where is there a space in your life now where you can connect with the feeling of spaciousness? I mean, honestly, my, my current home, you know, like I, I really like, yeah, it's, it's a good, decent size. There is space. I yeah. enjoy it. So I feel the spaciousness here. Um, I would say the same thing. Like when I go outside and I connect with nature, then I'm like, wow, there's so much space. Or if I'm like, you know, I think when I can look up at the stars or like see the sky, um, that it's like, okay, I love that. Right. Like I just love every time you're in that. that Bring in, I'm so grateful for the where I am now. I'm so grateful for the spaciousness that I feel in nature. And I'm so grateful for the spaciousness of the future home that's waiting for me, period, end of story. Right. And when you start to integrate that feeling, and I love this because, you know, my specialty isn't manifestation. That's not like my niche or anything, uh, but it is something I play with in my personal life. But what you're actually doing in that process is repatterning your body to navigate the somatic emotion of that so that it is normalized in your body. And when you do it in those brief moments like that, you're working with the episodic memories of your right brain hemisphere, which actually supports the regulation of your brain and your body. And so when you start to practice this throughout your day, like literally 20 seconds, like five times just spread out your day, that's like what, a minute a day, seven minutes a week, you're repatterning your brain and your body and the stimulus you keep feeding through those thoughts that then spark a feeling are just transforming the wiring of your being. And when you do things like that, it leads to new styles of thinking, which can lead to the road that then gets you to that destination. But when your body is in a certain present space and it's like, this is where I am, I really don't see beyond this, then your thoughts, your feelings, your habits, your choices, the patterns of your body are leading you to create that. And so part of the journey is not just healing and resolving, you know, disruptions of well-being. Well, yeah, like, you know, my thoughts are pretty nice and my feelings are pretty nice and I don't have any unhealthy, you know, like you're in a good place or whatever. That's the place for expansion. And that's what the soul is here for. And so the journey then becomes, well, I'm not just like healing something. I'm transforming the essence of who I am to evolve and to expand into the highest expression that my soul could dream possible in this lifetime. And that's like, whole next level like whoa baby wait a second 
memory <laughs> pattern and trillions of networks in my brain and my body so that my consciousness can be a container for my dreams and my deepest desires. And when you start to see yourself as the person who's like, yeah, of course I live in this spacious $3 million house. Are you kidding me? That's patterned into my body as the state of my being and the essence of my identity that transcends anything that any one else could say any thought could say any situation could point otherwise it's so patterned in your body that then you start to think and feel and act and move and choose like that person because your consciousness is transforming your neurobiology and so when they talk about you know like um the law of assumption or this and that i see it talked about in so many very superficial ways that's just like you know work with your mindset and just think these good things and just assume you're that but no you're repatterning trillions of networks of your neurobiology so that the wiring of your brain supports your consciousness in being that person. Because if you look at the energy pathways in the brain of a multi-billionaire, the way that their brain is generating signals that navigate life is different from, you know, someone who's not in that scenario. And so it's not just let me be around these people and try to think like them. It's how can I actually pattern my body so that it's automatically generating a somatic emotion that says, this is who I am. And then you start to say, okay, well, that version of me would be doing this. But instead of thinking through that in your mind, your body starts to project that. And that's how I've gone through my journey of identity shifts. You know, there's like seven years ago, the essence of the identity of that past self was I am living with complex trauma. I am completely disabled. I have a difficult time leaving the house. I have a difficult time making a meal. And that was part of the identity. And then it was, oh, wow, you know, I'm self-healing this. I'm rewiring my brain. I'm transforming my body. And then it was, I'm discovering the neuroscience of the most complex, misunderstood psychiatric conditions in the world. But then it was like, I don't want to have any ties with the psychiatric world. I don't want my work to have any association with a system that is so corrupt. It's not even worth talking about. And so then it was like, well, now what is my identity? My identity for years has been growing into this version of me that was proud to have this neuroscientific understanding that could explain mental health diagnoses. And now I want nothing to do with that system. How am I supposed to repackage my work? And it was still an identity of healing from trauma. So, okay, now I healed the trauma. How am I supposed to have an identity that has nothing to do with that when that's been my life for decades? How am I supposed to reframe my work when it's been to resolve this thing that's led for decades? Who am I supposed to be now? And it was never an issue of how do I go through my mind and say, well, who would I like to be? And how could I act like that version of me and just assume it? How could I attract it into my life by thinking it? No. That will never get to the places that matter the most. It can lead you places, but it can't lead you to the place that matters the most. The place that matters the most is perfect union with all that you are and the manifestation of your soul's divine intentions that were predestined before you were born because your desires are placed inside of your body, mind, and soul for a sacred divine reason that's bigger than you can fathom. And it's the journey of becoming that allows it to be so meaningful. And so then it was like, how do I become this version of me when I don't even know who that is? And so it was never about that. It was how do I repattern my body to feel the sensations that are the essence of my deepest desires? And that journey led me to discover this is just the essence of who I am. That feeling of spaciousness is my soul. That feeling of abundance is my soul. That feeling of freedom is my soul. That all the feelings I want are actually the essence of my identity. And it had nothing to do with all the labels or descriptors. And so that was kind of a rabbit trail, a very deep, fiery passion. Where do we start? <laughs> no, that good. With that. no, that was good. <laughs> um, but, you know, in that desire, that spaciousness, that freedom, when you plant those moment memories, as I call them, because there was a time I could only have moment memories. I couldn't remember day to day things for over half a decade. There were only moment memories, but your body remembers the moments of how you felt 
and how you moved. So when you're in a moment of feeling spacious, doesn't matter the details of that scenario, you pause, you pause your body, you bring awareness to how you're moving. Are you rushing through it? Are you like, oh, I got to clean this? Are you just bring your body into the pattern of movement? You want it to automatically suggest to you in the future. Do you want your body to be like, oh, oh my God, the spaciousness of this room is like, I could just sit here and grin ear to ear because it's so spacious and I'm drowning in spaciousness and this feeling is everything. How do you want your body to suggest your patterns of feeling and movement down the road? And how can you pause and hold space for that? And when you're in that moment and you catch that, the stars, you feel that spaciousness, how can you breathe deeper and allow that pattern of feeling and that pattern of movement where your body pauses and breathes deeply and is fully submersed in the moment and the feeling is expansive and nourishing and fulfilling and say, I'm so grateful for this moment and I'm so grateful for all the other ways this feeling will show up. And you can stay general and say, this feeling will show up in feeling spacious and feeling free or will show up in my future home, will show up in my future relationships. And when you embed that pattern in your body, that's part of the quantum leap that you had talked about before, where you're like, you know, I hear things about the quantum leap and it could happen tomorrow and stuff. It's not about something outside of you happening in a moment outside of now. It's about the feeling that's embedded where enlightenment meets embodiment, the essence and identity of your soul, who is spaciousness and freedom, is embedded and encoded into the cells of your body. And it's in this eternal now moment where you become it. Mm-hmm. That was so like <laughs> intelligently said. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So no, I, I understand that. So if I am, yeah, if I really, I'm excited, I'm at peace, whatever, joyful with spaciousness, with that feeling, whatever feelings I associate with that, take that. And like, if, so if I want a house that's spacious or I want a relationship that feels held and spacious and whatever, take that feeling with me and put it in that desire, basically. Yeah. And how you do it is to first prioritize embedding that energy into the essence of your identity and then letting that lead the way. You don't want to start with pointing at the thing outside of you that you don't have yet, but by saying, I am spaciousness. I am freedom. I am tenderly holding myself. I am exploring emotional intimacy with myself. I am these things. And that becomes such a core part of you that there won't need to be the, you know, how can I align myself with this thing that's outside of me that I haven't experienced yet, but I really want it, you know, that that, that creates more friction and more resistance and more disharmony. But when you're like, I am spaciousness. So it's really only natural that I live in a home that feels spacious. I am so worthy of holding myself and I do hold myself and I am so confident in embodying, you know, whatever it is, it's only natural that of course I am creating a life where I have things outside of me that reflect who I am back to me. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, that makes total sense. And so when, because at the end of the day too, this is awareness, you're having awareness for what. And so if I'm like, I'm spacious, I like, I am freedom, I am spacious, anything that's not, it's going to be met with resistance. Yeah. And in that resistance is an opportunity to say, what part of me needs to know unconditional love so that they can feel the spaciousness that is the truth of who they are. You know, what part of me needs to feel that unconditional love to feel the abundance of who they already are? What part of me needs that unconditional love so that they can feel this thing that they don't feel right now. And because of that, it's creating resistance. And so it really is this deeper inner journey because it's never the things outside of us, you know, and, and even you had mentioned, sometimes I have an investment in myself and it feels amazing. It feels expansive. I'm like, yes, I'm doing this. And yes, and sometimes like, oh, this is, I feel guilty. I feel ashamed. I feel this. And now I'm not enjoying the thing I invested in. And so it's never about the thing, but about the parts of all of us. And so every moment is this opportunity 
to reunify somatically felt in the body with unconditional love yeah. and unconditional love says, well, of course you deserve to have spaciousness. Of course you deserve to have freedom. Of course you deserve abundance. Of course. But then there's parts of us who are like, wait, but that's not what life taught me. Life didn't teach me I was worthy of that. What are you doing? Come at me with all of this love. I'm not used to it. And we're like, hey, let me hold space for those parts of me. How can I reunify those parts of me with the love that I am and create a new normal where feeling joy is normal. Feeling whole is normal. Feeling fulfillment is normal. Feeling abundant, excuse me, abundant is normal. Feeling peace is normal. And anything that's not that is like, okay, wait, no, something's off because that's my normal instead of the other way around. Right. Absolutely. And that's what majority of us are living in pain and fear and majority of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like we feel parts of the joy and the happiness and the peace and the spaciousness and the freedom and all of that. But it's, we want the, we want that to be the majority and not the, yeah, yeah, we not want the that small percentage. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. And to allow that to be so encoded in the essence of our identity that it's not conditional or dependent on things outside of us. I'm spacious no matter what, because it's who I am. I feel free no matter what, because it's who I am. I feel abundant no matter what, because it's who I am. And, you know, it is a practice and a journey of rewiring the body and reshifting the energies of consciousness. But that is like the intention. So yeah. what do you truly desire? And what is the deeper, 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 and then one layer deeper reason that you actually want that? Because of mm -hmm. course, it's easy to say, well, yeah, we would all like a nice big house. We would all like to go travel all the time. Like we would, all okay, but wait, why do we actually want that? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's like, because <laughs> it sounds good, because I want to experience it. <laughs> like, right. Why do you actually want it? And how can you question that reason and try to go a layer deeper? Yeah. I mean, the first thought that comes up, it's it's probably just ego driven. You know, most of it is, you know, ego driven. Like, why do I want it? Because I do like, because I deserve to do it. You know, like, if, like another well, thing. What's wrong, like, with that? what's wrong with that too? Yeah. Like, like, I want to do it. I'm worthy of it. I'm deserving of it. You know, the thing that pops up, you know, as far as desire goes, or just the correlation of the spaciousness. It's like when I see or, you know, just traveling, right? And I go somewhere where I can see the ocean and the sky and like cliffs and just like very expansive um, landscapes. Um, you know, when you're people on like the coast of Italy or the coast of France or the coast of Greece, you know, somewhere in Greece and you're like looking out off these like cliff sides and you can just see like miles of ocean and miles of sky um it's just a beautiful thing and i think that that's like what my soul is like so it's like my soul is craving just expansion and spaciousness and i think that's like those that's like what that's what my soul is and what it is craving because i feel that i don't have that and I feel very closed in sometimes because I feel like there is so much more potential for me and I am maybe not capitalizing on that potential. I'm not really, you know, out there doing probably what the true essence of my soul is meant to be doing, you know, and I'm reminded, I'm reflected of things. Like I had a call earlier with someone and I was telling them, you know, essentially what I do for a living in my nine to five I enjoy the parts of it of me, you know, when we're talking business teaching, I enjoy the teaching because I, I'm so confident in what our brand is. I enjoy it. I'm confident. I'm like, no one could argue what I'm saying. Like it is, it's good. Um, and so I get in that like teaching moment, but then I'm also just like, meeting new people and or reconnecting with people that I've already, you know, connected with and I'm social and I'm talking and I'm learning their story and I, I'm talking to, you know, attorneys that are, have expansive bank accounts probably. They're making some good money, you know? So it's like they're, ref I'm reminded of how much abundance, you know, is even out there, you know, just having these conversations, getting, getting to, because, 
you know, I get to expense things or whatever. It's like getting to dine at a nice restaurant and put it on a card and not think twice because it's not my money. But I want it to be, I almost like, I think sometimes I'm like, Kelly, this is your money. Like, I mean, obviously I'm not like going crazy or anything like that, but you know what I mean? That little, that subtle shift where you're shifting the energy and like, of course this could be me. Of course this is me. (laughs) It's me. Right. Yeah. I'm like, I, I literally today I had that thought with myself. I'm like, but Kelly, like you are like, you are doing like you're, you are mimicking as if this money is yours. And it's like, yeah, I got it. Yeah. I just treated six people to a thousand dollar dinner. You know what I mean? It's like, yes. And that's where it all starts. Yeah. And it's like, it's just reflecting back to me the expansiveness and all of that. So it's, it's neat. Like, I'm like, so that's why, I mean, maybe that's part of why I enjoy my, my career. And with that, I feel like there is so much more for me to be doing. I don't know when people are always like, yeah, what do you really want to be doing? Or what's your like, you know, where do you see yourself? I'm like, I don't know. Like sometimes I'm like speaking on stages, but even that, like, honestly, I want to be just like sitting on a yacht in the freaking like coast of Italy. That's what I would like to be doing. That's my deepest desire. Like, I don't want to fucking work. I don't want to do anything. I want to get paid or I just want to, whatever. Yeah. Float on someone else's money. I don't care. (laughs) So a couple of things came up. One is you mentioned, I want that thing because I feel like I don't have it. Yeah. And what came through like more loudly than just like, the actual sound of your voice was this like bigger energy that was like, I want the part of me that I've never known. I want the part of me that I've never known. I want the part of me that I've never known. I want the part of me that I've never known. And that's really the deeper thing because you are that you are that your soul is that the essence of soul is this aspect of the universe knowing itself through the expression of experience in human form. And so when the soul exists independently of the human body, it is all of that. But when you are all of that within the totality of infinity, you don't want to just know that anymore. You want to know what it's like to be in a really specific expression that has aspects of that energy but in a really specified way i want to know my infinite freedom my infinite spaciousness my infinite love my infinite expansion as kelly i want to know my infinite spaciousness my infinite freedom my infinite love my infinite abundance my infinite joy my infinite wholeness my infinite fulfillment my infinite presence my infinite divinity my infinite nature as Kelly discovering this through Kelly's podcast, for example. (laughs) And so in this exploration of your deepest desires, yes, it would be wonderful to be sitting on that yacht, but what would you want then? If you were already on that yacht and you had a million dollars and you had the big house and you had the romantic lover and you were getting married and you were talking about kids and you were in good health how would you feel? How would you think? What would you believe? And who would your identity be? And what would you then desire? Because we're never at a place where it's like, yeah, that's it. I'm good. <clears throat> no, oh, I, know. I, I, I know. I know. We're always one. I could never have a desire. I could never I could never dream up a deeper desire. No, that's not the nature of infinite expansion, which is what consciousness is. And when you go to those deeper questions, you can really dive into, wait, but why do I actually want this? What do I want to feel? What do I want to think? What do I want to believe about myself? Who do I want to be? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. No, I I'm, totally. I, I know. I I am aware that there will always be something bigger, greater that I am. You know, my podcast called Chase Life with Kelly. There's, you know, <laughs> last name's Chase. We're always chasing something. Always. So if you, if you were there, okay. If you were on that yacht, yeah, okay. You, yeah. If you can close your eyes and go into the imagination, whatever, whatever helps you're on that yacht, you're floating out there. Just the perfect weather. 
you've got that perfect view, the mountains and the cities and the ocean and the skies and perfect day, perfect weather. You're wearing the most abundant, luxurious clothes and you just feel incredible in your healthy body and so relaxed and strong and flexible, but at ease and just so self-assured and, and just this clean energy of worthiness. And, you know, you're out on this yacht with your, um, romantic partner or boyfriend or husband or whatever phrase feels most yes and you know you're talking about having kids and you have three and a half million dollars in multiple accounts and multiple investments with real estate and all of this stuff and you have some form of providing value doesn't matter what it is right now but some form of providing value where you're consistently receiving money with very little effort putting very little time into that you're there who do you believe yourself to be or who are those parts of you that you feel like you can't be right now who you are as Kelly? Mm. Huh. Like that I could, like for how I think right now, like I couldn't be that person that's on the yacht. Yeah, like who would those parts of you be in that scenario that you can't be in terms of your identity or sense of self right now? Right now. Um, it, honestly, the, the first thing that came to mind is, but how? Like, how do I get there? And I know that that is the number one thing in all of this <laughs> science stuff. They're saying, don't like the how, well, like, figure go the how. Out. like go of the how. <laughs> But is, that is well, literally the first thing that came up. I'm like, well, how? I got to meet the guy or I have to create this business that's bringing in all this money. And it's like so constant analysis. Awesome. I'm like, <laughs> kill it. That's awesome. Because this actually goes back to our last episode. We were like, what's the missing link? What's the block? What's the bridge that you need to walk over to everything you want? And it's because of being too much in the mind without connection to the somatic emotions. Because when you're in that experience, there is not a single thought in your mind. You are in your body. There is not a single thought of cause effect correlations from your left brain hemisphere. Your right brain hemisphere is tripping balls on how good you fucking feel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like point blank. And so the goal is to integrate. <laughs> the goal is to integrate those feelings in your body. And if you can't get there, that's an invitation to get more into the feelings in your body. And so like baby steps, when you're watching a movie and you feel that emotion and you're like, a part of me, like I, when I watch movies, I mean, like I, I like clear the house. Cause I'm just preparing to be really loud. Like I well, Chai's are, oh my God, I'm sobbing my guts on those. <laughs> like, I get all in. And the awesome part is right after that, this has become a ritual, I go do my mirror work and I can always get in touch with parts of me that I couldn't access before. Because when you watch a movie, you're engaging your right brain hemisphere, especially with the social engagement of witnessing people interacting with each other, the visual engagement of watching something on a TV screen. And the right brain hemisphere is also really good about the feeling of experience. Because the fact is you're in a body sitting on a couch or whatever, watching like some flat screen where people are like pretending to do stuff in some past moment and they filmed it. Like the fact of it is like really underwhelming, but the feeling is like, I'm like tripping into this parallel dimension where I get to see other people's lives and go through this journey that like is totally foreign to me. Right. So it's like super right brain. And that's how we connect with the somatic emotions. That's how we connect with the feelings in our body. That's how we connect with our emotional feelings. And so when you go into a movie, watching a movie and you can hold space to say, my goal is to feel as deeply as I can every chance that I can just to see what it feels like. <laughs> mm. Like that's, that's the baby step. Um, and then uh, a tip for starting to work with somatic emotions, something I wanted to share that kind of ties into this. So the goal is 
My body is so embedded with spaciousness and freedom that it doesn't even question. Of course, I'm on a yacht with my husband. Of course, I have three and a half million dollars in my freaking bank account. Of course, I'm making bank doing whatever the fuck I want to do because that's just who the fuck I am. Like, of course, I'm out here traveling the fucking world. Of course, like, obviously, this is me. That joy, that freedom, that is so embedded in my body that I can't imagine a life where that's not what I'm experiencing. Like, obviously, instead of the mind saying, but that's not me. So how do I get there? So that the, that is me because that sounds nice. But like, like I got to think my way there because I can't feel that. Right. And so we want to get there. But how do we just start with this introduction of how can you feel feelings inside of your body without your mind interrupting you? God, how can you do that? Maybe that's why we like do ayahuasca or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's all these avenues to get more inside of the body. And this also ties back into something we had talked about before where it's body, mind, soul, because the mind is the meeting space between the soul and the body where enlightenment, the light of your soul meets embodiment, being fully in your body. And so all these different avenues for healing, the most effective ones are how can you get more in your body and feel things in your body because that's where all the wisdom is. That's where all the power is. Like you could go, I mean, I could go on a spiral talking about like Kundalini energy, for example, when you have that energy moving from the base of your spine to the very top of your brain, the middle of your brain, like all these different areas, you're activating these different regions of your brain. You're moving the cerebral spinal fluid. You feel more energy than you could ever feel from like the top, not drugs in the world. Like, like <laughs> I've had moments where I'm like, like I, just, like I feel like I could do a million and it's not it's not manic it's a very different feeling it's so much life moving through your body there's no space for a mind there's no thought when I go and I write 10 pages or make these posts or like do all these things there was never once a moment where my mind thought about doing it never there was never a moment where my mind thought I'm gonna go write that down Wait, let me organize that thought. Um, let me see. There was never anything from the mind. Zero, zilch, nada. And that's how we get to the places we want to go. We don't use the mind. But to get there, it's how can we bring the soul into the body? How can the light of our self essence be brought into the patterns of the body? And so in that first, okay, I'm ready for this, but what's that first step? The first thing to do is to um, start expanding that awareness. And to bring that awareness into every moment of every day until it's muscle memory, right? Like you have muscle memory of how to make toast or wash your hair, or brush your teeth or whatever. You want to have muscle memory of awareness, have muscle memory of self-awareness. Are you aware of your breathing? Yeah. It's shallow. Are you <laughs> yeah. And so the first thing to do is how can I bring awareness from my mind down into my body. And when you start to do that in your everyday moments, you're driving. Oh, I didn't even realize that I wasn't breathing deeply. Oh, I feel like my mind's a little quieter. Oh, I feel a little more in tune with my body. Oh, the colors look a little brighter. Oh, I didn't notice that tree over there. I've driven past that tree a thousand times and I never actually saw it because I was so in my mind and not in my body. Um, you can even put on uh, breath work, nothing too intense because you want to stay present when you're driving, but you can put on breath work while you're driving. Like some people do affirmations or podcasts and things, but if your mind is listening to something and your mind is driving, that's like double of you that's not in your body. <laughs> right. right, right. And, so, and so if you notice that, be like, okay, let me actually just change the station and put on 10 minutes of breathing. Your whole life will change. So the first is awareness of breath. And the biggest mistake I see is people having this practice where they'll do that. And they're like, yeah, I did my 15 minutes of breath work this morning. Okay, 
And were you aware of your breathing five minutes later? Were you aware of your breathing when you were driving in your car? When you were aware of your breathing when you were at work? When you were aware of your breathing when you were sitting at your desk? Were you aware of your breathing when you were feeling these emotions or being stuck in your mind? Would, were you aware? Well, no, I was aware of my breath when I was meditating for 15 minutes. That's 15 minutes out of 24 hours. It needs to be a moment to moment practice that is cultivated as muscle memory. And then once you start to have the breathing awareness, and that awareness actually doing something where you're like, oh, I'm not just like noticing that I'm breathing shallowly. I'm actively changing my breath. And as someone who went through years of oxygen deprivation and 700 hours on oxygen tubes, I'm forever reminded of that. And even now, I notice such a huge transformation in the flow of my um, just inner energy, the, the flow of being able to, for example, write 10 pages and totally organize this work without a single thought in my mind versus I've been trying to do this for hours and days and my mind kept getting stuck just from shifting the energy in the body. And then the next step is your posture. And so just as you practice the awareness of breath every moment of day and you start to consciously shift it, how's your posture? Is it upright? Is it relaxed? A lot of times um, people have forward head posture where instead of being kind of like this they're just kind of like this yeah. it's subtle but it's like really normal and that's a huge thing you're stopping all the fluid from actually moving into your brain and into your body and communicating and so to have that nice good posture where you're like very embodied and confidenced but relaxed into worthiness and that's where masculine feminine comes into the actual positioning of our body and then to practice awareness of one to three grounding sensations in every moment. And again, the goal is for this to be muscle memory, where your mind actually suggests it automatically because you practiced it so much. And so then you're in every moment, so you're like, breath, posture, I see the sky, I feel the feet on my ground, I hear the birds. And that shift of awareness becomes your moment to moment like compass, your anchor, your grounding point, your space where you go before there's direction. And then to have that awareness of inner sensations and to have awareness of your present moment needs. And that takes practice and is a deeper dive. But that awareness practice where it becomes muscle memory is that first big giant quantum leap, if you will, where you're like, yeah, this sounds good. I'd like to be more in tune with this, um, but it's kind of impossible and everything I want's over there. This is that thing where you're like, ah, I have this awareness of my breath, my posture, grounding sensations, my internal sensations, and the present moment needs in my mental, emotional, somatic, and energetic bodies that will unlock absolutely everything you need to move forward beyond anything you could have imagined possible. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> very, very indeed, my darling. Okay, so I've heard, like, as far as the, like, the three sensations, um, one of, like I said, I've, I've had a couple of women on here to talk about somatic too, and one of them had mentioned, like, the five senses, like, that was a somatic practice um, where you, you know, in that moment, what are you hearing, smelling, whatever, right? So... I want to say, and maybe I misunderstood, but in that scenario, it's like they're doing that five senses to ground themselves, to to tell the body that it's safe in maybe a triggered moment. So in your case, what you just went through, can you use those tools like that too? Like when you're in a triggered moment and you want to feel safe, or are you using those tools more so to in more of a positive moment when you are feeling those enlightened positive emotions and you want to lock that in versus locking in a trigger right. moment, right? I love that. That's a really beautiful question. So it's both. And one thing I love about this path is everything I talk about, and this has actually been one really fun challenge, if you will, of learning how to, you know, market and do messaging. Cause it's like, who are you talking to? And you know, what are you addressing? I'm like, well, it's funny you talk about that because this same thing allowed me to heal hundreds of health challenges from complex trauma. But that's usually not the people that I work with and my one-on-one -on -one clients. Sometimes it's that, but what I actually work with is expanding into somatic emotions that feel like heaven on earth. 
Okay, wait, how did we quantum leap here from healing, disabling health challenges from decades of gnarly trauma that's unspeakable, you know, violations against you as a human being to somatically feeling heaven on earth? That's a pretty big jump. And you're saying the same thing can transform that and get you here and move through that? Yes, yes. So um, when I work with clients, it's, yes, we're healing and resolving disruptions, but the goal is to anchor those somatic emotions in. And so it's for both of it, because what happens is you cultivate the inner skill sets as muscle memory, and then it can be used for every intention, just like writing becomes a muscle memory, but it's not, well, I learned how to write so I could write letters to my family. It's I write, so now I can write poems, I can write stories, I can write letters, I can write to-do lists, I can write notes, I can, I have a muscle memory, an inner skill set that has infinite applications to serve me in infinite ways. And so if you're in a triggered moment, I'm aware of my breath. I'm using my breath to regulate my nervous system. I'm using my breath to calm and regulate, calm and regulate. I'm here now. I'm not in that trauma anymore. I'm not in that space where I'm unsafe anymore. I feel my presence. Aware of your posture. I'm not powerless because when you're in trauma, the body goes into curling or fight or running. And so your posture changes into a survival state but when your posture is embodying confidence where you're strong in your confidence and you're relaxed in your worthiness and your posture is saying that somatically and that is rippling into how you feel being in your body well then of course i'm safe i'm confident that i'm safe i'm worthy of safety and the most important thing in that scenario when you're healing a trigger is not feeling powerless and when you're in this confident, worthy posture where you're sitting upright and you're aware of your body and the posture you're in, you're telling your body, I'm not powerless anymore. Yeah, I was powerless when I was being assaulted, but I'm not there. My body feels I'm not there. And my body feels that it has power right here. And now my mind is feeling more empowered because my body felt it first. Mm -hmm. And then when you have the practice of the grounding sensations, there's a deeper neuroscientific insight to that. When you're showing your body a present moment stimulus that's grounding, um, and that's an important clarifier because it's not just any stimulus. Like if you're hearing a talk show about politics, for example, like that's not grounding, right? Like it's it has to be something that's actually grounding and bringing you into the present moment in a way that is touching on those five sentence, se senses in a way that is positive, positive, grounding, gentle stimulus. Every moment that you show your body a present moment and it's felt, the activity of its data is getting integrated in a new way. So if you're in a trigger, then there's some unprocessed sensation from the past. There's the data in the body and it's like, ah, ah. I'm navigating life and it doesn't feel good. But you're like, oh, but look, I smell the eucalyptus in this essential oil bottle. And then the data's like, oh, Oh, we're okay. Oh, new connections being made in the brain. Oh, that's a past sensation and it's over now and I'm here and I can smell eucalyptus. And you're actually creating healing for the past by anchoring yourself into the present. And then as you expand awareness of your inner sensations, you start to make new connections in your brain in terms of, you know, actually healing something before the expansion. And so if you're in this present moment, you're aware of your breath. You've calmed your nervous system. You're aware of your posture. You've helped your nervous system feel empowered, which then ripples into your mind. You're aware of these grounding sensations. And then the data from the past is making new connections because you're oriented in the present. And then you expand awareness of the sensations. The front brain is like, oh, let's connect to the back brain because the front brain has the awareness, the back brain has the sensations. And then your left brain does language and your right brain does feeling and sensation. And so when you're aware of your inner sensations and you can describe that to yourself, oh, the left and right brain hemispheres have new connections through the corpus callosum and you're rebuilding your brain. And then you go deeper and you say, I need to be aware, I desire to be aware of my present inner needs, the needs of my mental body, the needs of my emotional body, the needs of my somatic body, the needs of my energetic body. And one of those needs, for example, is the need to feel safe. 
and the need to feel supported and the need to feel seen and loved and the need to feel secure and provided for, the need to feel respected, embraced, those attachment needs that we had talked about before. And so this journey can heal and transform and resolve absolutely any disruption of well-being. Absolutely any disruption in your thoughts, absolutely any disruption in your emotions, absolutely any disruption of your, you know, quote unquote personality or the way that you experience your own energy of self within your experience, any disruption of your identity, all of it. And then when you're in that place of homeostasis, you can use the inner skill set because it's neutral, just like writing. And you're like, okay, I'm just going to repurpose the skill set that I have, I have muscle memory now of being aware of my breath. So how can I expand, not just come to regulation, but how can I expand the container of my body to flow more of my soul and allow more life force energy to flow through me so I can feel life more deeply? And then you're aware of your posture. How can I allow the posturing of my spine to move more cerebral spinal fluid so that more of my soul can actually flow inside of my body? And then you're aware of those grounding sensations and then you start to become more aware and then you get to those moments where you're like, I feel spaciousness and you cultivate a muscle memory that says... I'm so grateful for the spaciousness I feel, and I'm so grateful for every symbol of my experience that will further increase the feeling that is already anchored into my body. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I totally understand. It's about, I mean, you're regulating your nervous system and in that sense, you're creating safety within the body. And when the body feels safe, it has the capacity to do anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then it's no longer the body projecting into the mind and disconnecting you from your soul right. it's the soul flowing through the body and consciously using the mind to create reality yeah we need more of that <laughs> yeah. wow so yeah i i invite you to to explore yeah. deeper um and maybe even do some journaling after this time to just say what do i want and then who would those parts of me be that they don't feel like they can be right now? What would I believe about myself, about others, about life that I feel like I can't really believe right now? How would I feel? And why do those feelings seem out of reach for me right now? What would I think? And that includes, you know, perspectives on life or possibilities for what you could experience or that inner narrative or self-talk. How would I or you think in ways that you can't really think right now. And then you can go a layer deeper. And then I want to share one more practice you can play with. Yeah. This was such a fun game changer, especially when I couldn't remember my entire life and I wanted to expand into these like really big dreams. It's called, drum roll please, the imagination station for inner child liberation <laughs> <laughs> the imagination station for inner child liberation and there's a million ways you can play with this but it's basically giving yourself permission to dream again and not look at the how not look at the when but to focus on what and why what do you want why do you want it and to always go a layer deeper into the why because there's always like something deeper and a lot of times we don't really know about it or maybe we have a feeling but we don't know how to put it into words and so just by inviting you know space for that question we can explore parts of ourselves in new ways but it's just a container where you set everything aside and give yourself time and space to dream and one place you could start is <clears throat> okay <clears throat> Here's a suitcase. It's $3.5 million, but I need to know in the next hour exactly how you will allocate and use this. Otherwise, you don't get it. So you're required to have a plan mapped out to use, enjoy, invest, circulate, accumulate $3.5 million. And if you can do that in the next hour and say, this is exactly how I'll use it and why, then you can have it. And open possibility. And let your body feel the open spaciousness of that possibility. And, you know, you can really set yourself up 
do it in a space where you already feel comfortable to relax, maybe a little spacious, you know, your living room or something, light a candle, have some mood music, make yourself a hot cup of tea, snuggle up with your favorite cozy outfit or, you know, your cozy blanket. Or um, for me, I even have a, a squish mallow, one of those big, giant, fluffy stuffed animal things that I cuddle, cuddle with, you know, put on a fancy blingy dress or super cozy pajamas and create space to nourish an internal relational connection with the part of you who has the desire. And that's where you kind of ties back in with all this other stuff we've been talking about, where it's not just, hi, I'm Kelly and I want this. It's, hi, I'm an infinite soul expressing through a beautiful human vessel. And there's a lot of parts of me that I want to get to know in a deeper way. And I want a conscious, loving, intentional, present relationship with those parts of me, not just through my mind, but felt inside of my body, felt through the energy connection where I'm really attuned with who those parts of me really are, why they desire this, who they want to be in a way that that dream is attainable. Because if you're a certain kind of person, then that dream seems more possible than if you're not that kind of person and it seems really impossible. So who do those parts of me actually want to be where that dream could feel so easy and so normal and so within reach? And in this shift, yes, you're dreaming big and you're looking at reality in new ways, but you're also going deeper within and having a new kind of relationship with you. Mm. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. So play with it. It's a really fun practice and you can always shift the idea, you know, the amount of money or what you're doing or even something different. You know, you have one month and unlimited resources. How would you spend with that one month? It doesn't have to just be the resource of money or, you know, you did meet the love of your life and you are in this committed relationship and you have one month with unlimited money to do what you want. How would you plan that month? right? And then start to feel like in your body, like, what if this is possible, but really play with it and bring up that inner child who is a limitless dreamer. Before we were taught what reality is, there is that foundational aspect of our self essence who is a limitless dreamer. And when you tap into them, you can have more somatic attunement with your body and somatic attunement with your emotions and start to work on that inner intention to have that increased emotional intimacy with self. Because once you tap into that, you can have more intimacy with money. You can have more intimacy in relationships. You can have more connection and fulfillment and, you know, emotional expansion once you start to cultivate that inside of you. Absolutely. I feel that. I understand. I understand that. Okay. So everyone- you understand in your mind, but you feel it in your body. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Well received. Well received. I just, you know, everyone listening, I want you to like, obviously her and I are having this conversation, but please know like, this is like your exercise too. You know, like this is something that we want you to take action on. Um, listen to this episode again, um, you know, and really hear what Kristen is sharing with us. Um, so the, because some of the stuff may be completely foreign to you guys, um, you know, I have been involved in this uh, space for a handful of years now. So, you know, but still, even the way Kristen explains it, it's very intelligent. Um, so if you're like, what, I don't get it, or it's not landing just yet, like go back and listen again, um, yeah. because your soul is wanting you to. Yes. Agreed. Absolutely. Yeah. It is definitely, and yeah, start utilizing these tools to help navigate and expand you. Um, I love, like, it's interesting because when you said that about, you know, like writing, when you write captions for, for your content and that kind of thing, um, anything that you do, let's say this, anything that you do, it's body led versus mind led. And it's interesting because I feel like, you know, I can say like, oh yeah, I was like channeled a message and I felt so good when I'm like sharing it or posting it or whatever. And I have had, you know, I would say more so in the past, I've had that type of soul led channeled mind or I'm excuse me, like body led content, but I definitely have been disconnected from that. Um, cause it doesn't feel as like powerful, you know? 
Well, and part of that is just our culture has become so normalized that life is lived through the mind. And it's actually very rare, unique to have a soul that's inside of their body doing life without the mind saying anything in that process. That's a really foreign concept for most of humanity. And if I were to go up to someone and be like, hey, guess what? I just wrote 15 pages and I didn't have a, z a single thought inside of my mind while doing it. They'd be like, you on drugs or something like what's wrong with you like everything we do is from the mind you have to have thoughts inside of your mind in order to do something oh no the intelligence of my body came forth and wrote it straight from my soul like they think i'm a freaking lunatic because it's so not normal and so we want to flip, flip the script and change what's normal and that was actually a big part of the healing journey for a long time was redefining normal what is normal to you and if it's normal to be disembodied how can you be like, okay, that needs to change. It's normal to ground in my body and have that precede everything done through my mind. It's normal to X, Y, Z. And another thing with that is if it feels more or less powerful, I, th I think you said it felt a little less powerful to do it from the body because it was a... Uh, well, no, it, it, no, it, it, excuse me. It feels more powerful when I have done it from the body. Cause I, you know, I, I say, you know, I feel like I like channeled that message. Yeah. It yeah. Yeah. I was just writing and riffing and like, then I was like, God, that felt good to like express that, you know? Yeah. So mm -hmm. the goal is for that to be the normal, for that power to be the constant activity of you. And yes, for everyone listening, you know, no matter who you are, where you're at in the journey of self-healing, soul awakening, you know, inner expansion, start with those awareness practices where you're noticing your breath, you're noticing your posture, you're noticing one to three grounding sensations in every moment. And you practice that so consistently that it becomes muscle memory. You can put post-it notes on your mirrors and your drawers and your wallet all over your car, alarms on your phone every 30 minutes or as frequently as you can without interrupting whatever commitments that you have, right? You want to practice it so it becomes muscle memory, like being able to write. And then any moment that you need it or desire it, it's there easily accessible. It's not like, oh man, I have to go learn how to write again before I write this letter. Hang on. I got, no, it's a skill set that's there. We want that skill in our inner awareness. And then, yeah, to play with the idea of what do you really want? Like, what do you really, really want? Go back to the foundation of you that existed before life. Connect with your inner child. Maybe you bring up three to five what I call moment memories, they're episodic memories, which are more sorted in the right brain than the left, which connects deeper with the foundation of who we are in the body, through feelings, with the inner child. And if there had never been societal constructs or programming or familial projections or whatever it was that created a distortion and a limitation of reality for you, who is that foundation of your self-essence, that childhood self, in their purest rawest form and what would those parts of you be desiring now in your life and then go deeper and say why do you really want that who would those parts of you be in their identity of self that they can't be right now not within the expressions of experience well yeah i can't book a fight a first class flight to you know the bahamas and have an all inclusive resort for 2 months where i don't have to do anything Okay, that's, that's a surface level thing. Yes, that sounds fun. But if we're doing the inner work, we're going deeper than what you would say that the ego wants. Yes, we would all love to experience that. Yes, that sounds amazing. Okay, but why do you want that? Because I want to feel this. Because I want to be able to think this about life. Because I want to be able to think this about myself. Because I want to be able to believe X, Y, Z about who I am and what life is. Because I want to feel X, Y, Z in my body. Because I want, what do you want inside of your inner realities that you think you will be able to experience through that thing that's outside of you? And how can you shift that energy to say, actually, I have infinite inner power and I'm worthy and confident to like, you know, take that power to its next level. How can I cultivate those patterns so they're embedded in the cells of my body as the natural essence of my identity, where the way that I think, believe, feel, all of these things that I want 
exist independently of experiences outside of me. And nothing outside of me has the power, but I have the power to believe what I want to believe. I have the power to be who I want to be. I have the power to think and feel whatever I want to feel because I am the power of infinite love. And that infinite love is unconditional. It's not, yeah, you can feel whole when you are in the Bahamas on the all-inclusive resort or on that yacht with your three and a half million dollars in the bank. It's, I feel whole now because I am the essence of unconditional love and unconditional love doesn't have conditions. I am whole even when I can't remember my life. I am whole even when I'm in oxygen deprivation from decades of complex trauma. I was feeling whole before all those health challenges were resolved. I felt freedom and power and peace and joy and wholeness and fulfillment way before there was any experience that could mirror that back to me. And now I have these experiences in my life where I'm like, Wow, I didn't know I could just laugh until I cry with joy and ecstasy to this degree and actually have circumstances in my life give me reason to feel more of this because I was feeling those feelings every single day for years and embedding that into the cells of my body where the essence of my soul, who is already those things, was then being reflected into the patterns of the body without the mind interrupting, but rather the mind being the perfect meeting place. And then as you do this dreaming, as you do this dreaming for everybody listening, I want every single person to do this prompt. Stop, drop, and roll. Like, stop, drop, and roll. We're going to go do this. Write, write me out. Like, write me out. you blocking out some time in your calendar, and you're going to go play. You are required to play. You are prescribed play. It is a serious thing. You are definitely required mandated play. As you go and explore this imagination, st imagination station for inner child liberation, what do you desire? Why do you really, 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 really want that? What's deeper beneath that? How can you nourish an inner relationship with those parts of you, the part of you that wants to feel free. How can you love that part of you? How can you fall in love with that part of you? Just like you would fall in love with another person, just like you would fall in love with a character on a TV show, just like you would fall in love with a character in a book, just like you would fall in love with a precious, super cute, adorable, magical child, just like you would fall in love with your best friend that you're so stoked to get to share life with, just like you would fall in love with anyone or anything. How can you fall in love with the part of you that wants that freedom? And then in that space, you're no longer the experiencer focused on experience. And how can I attain this thing outside of me that's not here now? It's how can I feel so intimate and so close and so connected with all parts of me where I am so in love with the essence of my own self that I have the power to create everything I desire inside of my body, mind, and soul in every now moment. And the relational journey with yourself transcends every other journey you could ever dare to embark upon. And suddenly being out on that yacht sounds actually a little less exciting than the fact of getting to know all parts of your own self right here, right now. But then you'll also get that yacht because it's in your soul's destiny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> All the yachts. Yachts for everyone. <laughs> yachts for everyone. <laughs> That's amazing. Hmm. That's another fun practice. When you're out and about and you see the abundance of the universe, to celebrate the abundance frequency. Um, Heather Hoffman, Activation Vibration, talks about this idea a lot, is how all the abundance you see belongs to abundance consciousness. All mm -hmm. those people who have the millions of dollars, who have the 10 different cars, who have the 15 car garage for those 15 cars, whatever it is, it doesn't belong to them. It belongs to abundance consciousness and they've just tapped into it in a way that they can embody that abundance. And so when, you know, for example, if I go to the beach and I see, you know, just like dozens and hundreds and like, I don't even know how many boats all tied up to the, you know, the, the docks there. It's like, wow, 
Like, look at that abundance. There's so many boats and they're just sitting there. Like, it's not even like people are like out on those boats right now. And to feel the abundance inside of your body, what does it feel like to witness that level of abundance simply existing and mm -hmm. to connect with the consciousness of that and to celebrate the fact that it exists without conditions? It's not, I celebrate the facts that yachts exist when I own my own yacht. I celebrate the fact that people can go out to restaurants and drop thousands of dollars on a single meal without thinking twice. I'll celebrate that when I get to, no, celebrate the fact that that's a thing. Like, just like celebrate the fact that that exists, but feel the celebration in your body. It's embedding the cells of your body with the energy of what you desire. And what you actually desire is just more of you. You just want to know your soul essence, which is consciousness, which is universal intelligence, which is infinite everything. And when you feel that in your body, it just changes the whole game. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Are there any kind of final-ish questions to um, explore anything related with self-healing, somatic emotions, or soul awakening before we kind of bring this into a magical grand finale? Uh yeah, one thing um you mentioned at one point, whether it was on this conversation or something else, um, but uh the foundation of all four bodies, what are the four bodies? Can you remind us what yes, yes, great question. And the funny part is I never actually worked with the four bodies several years ago because I didn't like know that was a thing. And then as I've done this massive expansion in my own work and self-evolution. It's been mind blowing to see how everything was so tied to this and the four bodies and the foundation of them. So everyone listening, if you don't know about your four bodies, this is the beginning of a brand new journey because once you explore your four bodies and how they're interacting with each other, you'll have so much more inner power, so much more inner awareness, so much more opportunities to love yourself through the process of healing, transformation and expansion. And it will blow your mind because one of the biggest you know, challenges or roadblocks we face is working with one or two of the four bodies and not all of them or working with them in disjointed ways and not in a flowing way where it unites all of them. So the four bodies are mental, emotional, and then physical or somatic, and then energetic, ethereal, or spiritual. Different words say, mean the same okay. thing. Okay. And so the mental body, the emotional body, physical or somatic body, and then the energetic, ethereal or spiritual body. And then to work with the foundation of all of them is something that my work specializes in. Got it. Okay. Yes. You, I think on our first episode, I think you, you mentioned those. Okay. That's it. Good reminder. Perfect. Um, let me see. Um, <laughs> Maybe okay, what are your maybe explanations of law of assumption, law of attraction, law of detachment? Okay. So um, the universal laws really knit everything together, but the universe speaks in vibration and the vibration has to do with what energy is moving through our body because our body is the tool for creation or co-creation. Right. And so with that, what I often see is it being taught from a very superficial level of experience through the mind where you want something, you're quote unquote, practicing the laws by using the mind, and then you get this desired outcome or result. But that is still a very third to fourth dimensional level of consciousness. And the whole goal of the soul awakening, spiritual ascension journey is to move higher into the fourth, fifth dimension of consciousness and beyond. And in that place, you're not working with the mind you can use it as a tool, but it's not like your home base where everything's happening. And you're not necessarily working with a very specific outcome. It's more the energetic feeling and the deeper purpose of it. And so if I say, for example, 
I want X, Y, Z goals in my business. And I'm looking at the numbers of, well, I need this many people and this much of this and this, that moves you into the mind and away from the heart. Mm -hmm. And the heart is the most powerful, everything, the most powerful, you know, it has a lot of power as an organ in the body. It, the electromagnetic field of the heart is like a quadrillion, I forget the exact number, but like a quadrillion times more powerful than any of the thoughts we can generate in our mind. And so if, for example, I say I want X, Y, Z goals in my business and I'm focused on, I need this many people and then I'll be sending out emails after each session and then they'll have these practices every day. Yeah, those are important things to know about, of course. That's, you know, the masculine application of stuff. But why do I really want that? Well, because then I will have accomplished these goals in my business. That's from the mind. But if you say, how can I drop into my heart? How can I drop into my body? Why do I really want that? I want to feel the redemption of my years of struggle and pain so that I can serve and support someone so they can make it to the other side faster and easier. I want to feel the fulfillment and the expansion of my highest divine purpose and potential beyond anything my mind could have imagined. I want to feel a deep, emotional, somatic, energetic, and mental, four bodies, connection with these other people that I'd never met before. And now I'm sharing my most intimate gifts with them and their life is transforming before my very eyes. And I can't imagine what my life would be without having met them. I want to feel the passion of my purpose move through the cells of my body where when I speak, my mind had nothing to say, but my body and my soul had all of this wisdom that was dying to be poured into another human being. I want to feel the joy of knowing Knowing that someone else is experiencing the breakthroughs that I created for myself when no one saw the journey I was going through. No one saw me singing and talking to myself in mirrors for 10,000 hours over five years. I was living in a shed. I was by myself. I was alone. Nobody saw that expansion. But now the whole world gets to see the fulfillment of that expansion and who I became through the journey. And now their life is having these profound found, mind-blowing, life-changing, heart-exploding breakthroughs because of the work that I did. I got to feel the fulfillment and the ecstasy and the exuberance of my most authentic soul self and my highest version of me flowing through my physical body in a way that it penetrates every area of my existence and everyone in my life can feel that. I want to feel the joy of being able to expand my life because I am receiving money abundantly for fulfilling my highest purpose. And I am being rewarded by the infinitely abundant universe for being bold, for being courageous, for being a leader, for having something to offer that no one else has to offer. When you feel into that in your emotions, in your body, feel how different that energy is from I really want to reach these business goals and I need so many people to do it, right? Like the energy is totally different. Mm -hmm. And so when we're working with something like the law of assumption, you can assume that you are any kind of person and you can think your way there all day, but that doesn't matter if your body doesn't agree with it. Right. Well, yes, I'm a millionaire. Okay. Then why do I feel tension in my body paying for something that's $5? Okay. I, well, of course I can go travel on a yacht. Okay. Well, why do I feel these emotions where I feel really uncomfortable, whatever it might be. And so when you're just working through the mind, you're working with the mental body and leaving out the somatics, leaving out the physical body, leaving out the emotional body leaving out the energetic body in its purest state where it is the essence of your soul, not just a vibration you're trying to fake basically. And so when you work with these laws, you know, the law of assumption, the law of attraction, okay, well, if I think a certain way, then I'm bringing those thoughts back to me. That's not how it works. Your thoughts are the electric energy that goes out. But what comes back to you depends on the magnetic energy of your heart. And if you can't feel that in your emotions and your body, then it ain't coming back to you. And so, for example, if 
if you want a romantic partner and you think how amazing it would be to be so intimate and connected, but you can't feel emotional or somatic intimacy within yourself, then the energy is going out, but it isn't coming back because you need to do some reconfiguration inside of the electromagnetic field of your being and how you can emotionally and intimately connect with yourself and have that be felt in your body. And so with that, you can work from the mind. You can have a specific goal. You can force your thoughts to think things you've never thought before. But if you really want the juicy, delicious magic of light, if you want to know the ecstasy of co-creating reality through enlightenment in your body, embodiment, through the highest expression of your soul, where the actual patterns embedded in unconsciously in your body naturally, instinctively, automatically serve and support that, you want to go deeper and you want to work with the somatics. You want to work with all four bodies where they're saying the same things. And it's not your mental body saying, I'm going after this goal and your physical body like, yeah, my nervous system regulation cannot handle that. Are, are you kidding me? Like if I was in there, I'd, you know, share my pants or whatever. Like, you know, like, like to be able to get all of the bodies to say the same thing at the same time and be unified at their foundations. Mm. That was a great explanation. Thank you. That's yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, I love that. Okay, guys, it's all about the body. <laughs> it's all about the body. <laughs> Everything well, and, is the body. <laughs> and, and even more than that, and this is, an, and it's so fascinating because it's like everything's a rabbit trail to go deeper. It's more about the soul inside of the body because body. you could work with the physical body and your physical health. You could work with the physical body and the somatic feelings but if you're still focused on the human self in a human experience without attunement with who you really are, then you're still going to be playing a very limited game. But when there's your soul inside of the body and that union is top priority, that's where everything changes in the most mind-blowing ways. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. It's something that just came up for me while you were sharing that um and it, it goes back to earlier like if when you're feeling stuck around something like let's say I was like over my condo like let's say I was like I, I need more space right I need more space I, I feel stuck I feel claustrophobic I feel like I'm like constricted and all of that and people feel that way in relationships and they feel that way in many different areas of their life so so to harness the feeling of the opposite of that while still in the space of, like still in, you know, right. I mean, let, let's just say physical, like a condo, right? I want more. I want a bigger space, um, could use, you know, a bigger kitchen or something like that. But let's say at this moment in time, budget wise, financially wise, I can't have that I can't go and buy something new or I can't knock out a wall because that also costs you know money you know it's like getting yourself to be okay with what you have you know and obviously you know I obviously practice gratitude and and that helps but I'm just asking the question because I'm sure there's other people on the other end that feel that they're, they're like yeah well I just can't do this anymore like I'm frustrated how can I get it now like obviously right. we all need that we all want that like instant gratification, that kind of thing. And again, it's releasing the how, but they may feel like, okay, this body work. Yes. It sounds wonderful. And how long is this going to take? Cause I really want to like ha have my dreams become my reality like tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A huge thing that I work with and it's like my favorite thing in the universe is how can you have the somatic emotions you desire unconditionally. And part of that is embedding them again, it not sound like a broken record, but you're embedding them into your body where it is your natural state of being. And so when you're in a moment of frustration, 
that's an energy in your body that wants to be moved. And so it's easy for the mind to give descriptors. Well, I'm frustrated because I haven't made a million dollars yet. I'm frustrated because I haven't met my romantic partner yet. I'm frustrated because of these family members saying X, Y, Z to me. I'm frustrated because I've been in this condo for so long and I feel like I deserve a freaking upgrade by now. I'm frustrated Okay, hang on. If there wasn't the experience, there's just frustration. Okay, right. there's no reason for it. There's no reason for it. T take off the stories. Let them just sit in the corner. Time out. <laughs> Time out. There's frustration inside of my body. What is that trying to tell me? Well, it's trying to tell me that I'm frustrated that I don't have these things. Oh, the stories are in timeout, baby. The stories are in timeout. They're not welcome here right now. Why are you feeling frustration in your body? My body is feeling frustration because I don't feel supported to go after the things I really want. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. The little shift will open new doors. I'm feeling frustrated because uh, I don't feel safe in my body. And I feel like once I have these things, I'll be able to relax more inside of my body. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Okay. I'm feeling frustrated because I don't feel seen and loved and celebrated and appreciated and valued and wanted the way I know I deserve to be. And if these things were happening, I'd feel more loved and then I wouldn't feel so frustrated. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, why are you really feeling frustration in your body? I'm feeling frustration in my body because I don't feel respected and recognized for how utterly magnificent I am because if I was recognized and respected I'd have that million dollars and I'd have that bigger house and then I wouldn't feel frustration in my body now we're getting somewhere so what you really want is to feel respected and recognized and seen and loved and you know these these internal needs how can you be distinct from and connected with the parts of you who have those needs right because if you identify with that I am frustrated Okay, are you or are you in the awareness of a part of you that's feeling frustrated? We create space. Okay, I am the awareness of a part of me who is feeling frustration inside of my body. Okay, now there's a little bit of space where you can expand your window of opportunity to choose a new response. When you choose a new response, you choose a new energy in your body. When you choose a new energy in your body, you choose a new trajectory for the totality of the rest of your life. That's a big deal. And so now it's not, I'm frustrated because of these things outside of me and experience. It's I'm honoring the frustration inside of my body as a messenger of medicine and this opportunity to connect deeper with me and to allow that to be a baby step into my quantum leap so that when my quantum leap comes, I'll be able to sustain it through the energy inside of my body, mind, and soul. And so if there's those parts of you who are like, I'm feeling frustration in my body because of these certain needs, being respected, seen, loved, supported, safe, whatever it is, how can you fulfill those needs for parts of you in the present moment? And those stories about experience are still on timeout in the corner, not welcome in this conversation, because that is secondary. That comes after the fact of you being with you. And so when you're in that moment, yes, there might be some frustration because certain things aren't happening. But I've learned very deeply, that's never the truth of reality. The frustration exists regardless of what's happening. It was just that experience that triggered it inside of you. But that energy of frustration had always been there, just waiting to raise its hand and say, hey, I actually remember feeling somatically separated from unconditional love, and I'd really like to be reunified now. That's basically what it's saying. Just assume that every feeling you don't like or every feeling you like and want more of is a part of you. Just, hey, I'm raising my hand back here, waiting for you to pick on me. I remember what it was like to be somatically felt in the body. I remember what it was like to be somatically separated from love, and I'd really like to be reunified with that love and with all the other parts of me now. And if you use that interpretation, then there is nothing outside of you that can ever have power. Because when you're frustrated inside of your body because of experience, that experience, that circumstance, that situation has your power. 
has the essence of you flowing out over there instead of being in your body. And so if we want to move towards the space of everything we've talked about, those feelings we don't want or moments where you have a feeling you do want, you're like, oh man, why can't I feel this all the time? That's a part of you raising its hand. And you're like, yes, I pick you. Okay. There's a part of me that just wants to know that it's loved. Okay. How can we like reframe this whole experience that I'm in and totally shift these energies? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It, for me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it definitely does. Um, yes. And, and I say it does for me because I have worked, like I said, I, the somatic concept is not new to me. I have worked with like parts integration. Um, I've done that type of work before too. Um, so yes, I'm, I am familiar. It's just something I don't practice every day or. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's beautiful to recognize and honor. And with that, you could set a really bold intention where you want to practice it so diligently that you never need to practice it again because it becomes muscle memory. I think a lot of times it can be really intimidating to say, I need to practice this every day. Or like, you know, you go after those bigger dreams and you're like, how do you sustain that? Like, how do you hold that energy? You have to do all these, all these tricks and all these techniques every day just to hold the energy of it. No, 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 no. There's, there's an end in sight. It's not, I need to practice this every day for the rest of my life. I'm going to practice this so diligently right here and now that there will be a day sooner than later where I never need to practice it ever again because it becomes muscle memory, like writing. Once you learn to write, you never have to go back and say, I'm going to go learn to write. Wait, didn't you learn that when you were a child? Um, yeah, but I have to relearn it because I completely forgot and I haven't used it in a very long time. No, when your body learns to do something, it becomes automatic. And so the practice is not just, I need to practice it to work with parts of me. It's, I'm going to practice it so that I teach my body a new skill set that can automatically and effortlessly support my expansion for the decades to come. And that shift of intention holds so much power. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. You're right. You're right. Because it's whatever I have learned and um, embodied and integrated into my life already. You're right. It's not something I'm like, okay, I need to go do this. It's just, it is automatic. You know, it's a you know, innate awareness now, you know, I have higher awareness around certain things because of all the work that I have done. Um, and it's not like I have to go sit in a corner and be like, okay, I need to bring awareness to this right now. It just is. Yes. So, got it. Yeah. And you know, back to like what, when I was talking about, you know, feeling frustrated, right. And like, you don't have what you want yet and you feel restricted and, and limited and all of that. I just like literally the like analogy of like yoga, you're on a, mat that is not very large right and in your yoga practice if you're at a class or something right it's like you're in this small space but that small space can feel so expansive because you are creating the space within the body nailed it nailed it, nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. Yes, yes. I got chills when you said that. Yes, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. And so when you're you're on that, a lot of times, you know, yogis will say, we want to bring the practice of our practice into the practice of our life. And so you're yeah. using those principles of how can the essence of me flow more deeply into my body? And how can I move this energy inside of me and move beyond just the mind, deeper in the body, deeper attunement with myself and have the cultivation of this power from within? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I love it. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> yes, I'm proud of you. That's perfect. Nailed it. <laughs> That's, I, I'm like, after all these years, I finally understand what you know what I mean. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's a full body experience. It's not just meditation. It's not just breathing. It's not just exercise. You're bringing it all in. And then you do something like Ashtanga yoga and you're working with the masculine feminine energies in a very specific way. It's that's what the practice of our life is meant to be. And so that's 
what a lot of the practices I share with my one-on-one clients really dives into. It's these practices used in everyday moments, but in a way that expands your consciousness, allows you to have more power in your mind, more presence in your body, more attunement with yourself, more influence in reality from within your being. And like, nobody knows you're doing it. Like it was like 30 seconds where you just shifted your awareness. Nobody knows that you just like totally reclaimed your power and shifted your reality and rewired your neurobiology and like shifted your nervous system activity. Like that's real power. That's real, real, real fucking power. Hmm. That is. That's okay. I love that. (laughs) I love that. Okay. I I will wrap this. Do you have anything else that you want to share? Um, If yes or no, go ahead and share where people can find you again also. But yeah. Perfect. Um, Yeah. Just final thoughts is that your soul essence is the energy of all that you desire. And when you reunify with all parts of you, the game changes because it's not about attaining experiences outside of you in an alternate moment that is separate from the now. It is about the complete somatic reunification with the totality of all that you are. So I'm going to share a little light language and then an invitation to explore my work further. The soul essence is seeking embodiment within this lifetime, within this form, to know the totality of its divinity, first through the energy of its essence of self, and then within the expressions of experience. And it is only when you do the inner work and play that you can then expand reality from the inside out. If you start by working with the expressions of experience, working from the outside in through the mind, you are missing the whole point of this journey. And as you dive deeper inside within yourself, nourishing the essence of your true identity, the energy of your authentic soul self within its purest embodiment, the game changes. You hold infinite power and everything everything you desire is already yours. If you'd like to connect deeper with my work, you can find me on Instagram. Um, and then I have several free different gifts. You can explore um, playbooks, masterclass videos, all kinds of amazing offerings. And then if you'd like to dive deeper, I do have spaces available in my three to six month one-on-one body, mind, soul mentorship journey. And we explore original modalities that I've created that use neuroscience, consciousness, and unconditional love to completely rebirth your inner realities so that there is this space where embodiment meets enlightenment. You can resolve any and every health disruption in mental mental, emotional, somatic, and energetic bodies in the most loving way that really digs into the deep core foundational root of, excuse me, of all of it. And then from that space to expand unity of body, mind, soul, as the authentic essence of you flows through your four four bodies in a perfect, harmonious way. And the pathway to doing this is getting to know 20, 20, 20 distinct aspects of self again, using neuroscience, consciousness, and unconditional love, and then nourishing this very intentional relationship with those parts of you in a way that actually rewires your brain and your body. You transform the foundational depths of unconscious memories, the instinctive patterns of thought, feeling, belief, all all the sensations that precede your experience you transform it at their foundational roots. You never need to look back at past experiences to heal them, but instead look inward at the present patterns of navigation inside of your body. And then the ultimate aim is to expand, activate, and anchor somatic emotions that feel like heaven on earth. Heaven on earth uses the energy of your peace, power, presence, bliss, joy, abundance, freedom, embodiment, confidence, worthiness, passion, pleasure, play, awe, wonder, magic, childlike curiosity, wholeness, emotional fulfillment, and the purest expression of all that you are 
through the energy of your essence. This is how we ascend into higher states of consciousness and bring our body with us so that we are embodied in our expansion. This is how we create the new earth. This is how we anchor the fifth dimension. This is how we create heaven on earth from within and then expressed on the without. This is how we heal the past seven generations where there has been a normalcy of trauma and dis-ease. This is how we prepare the way for a new humanity. And so if you'd like to dive deeper into this journey, I would love to connect with you and serve you personally through my three to six month one-on-one body, mind, soul mentorship journey. And you can first find me on Instagram. I love it. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your light again with us. And thank thank you. you. Thank you. I had a great time. I'm very grateful to share in service and support. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And everyone go find her. You know, like she said, if you feel called to work with her or just tap into her universe, go check her out on Instagram. She's amazing. Thank you.